Algebra 1, 6.2c, differences of two squares. I'm going to do factoring of differences of two squares. In video 5.10a, we learned about special products. I don't know if you remember, the product of a sum and a difference of two terms is the square of the first term minus the square of the second term. So all it's saying is, if we've got the product of a sum and a difference, an a plus b times an a minus b, that it's going to give us a squared minus b squared. That we could take these two and make an a squared and just subtract b squared. And we can use this to factor the difference of two squares. Turn it around. a squared minus b squared is equal to, it opened up as a plus b times a minus b. And what if the b was a 3? What if we started plugging in some real numbers? Then we would have a squared minus 3 squared, wouldn't we? And we could write it as a plus 3 and a minus 3, couldn't we? We could also write it as a squared minus 9 and still have a plus 3, a minus 3. What if a was 5? We could write it as 5 squared minus 3 squared. And we could write it as 5 plus 3 times 5 minus 3. We could even do FOIL. We could do 25 minus 9. And we could do the 5 times 5 is 25. And the 5 times negative 3 is a minus 15. And a positive 3 times a positive 5 is a positive 15. And a positive 3 times a negative 3 is a negative 9. And the two center ones, the O and the I of the FOIL, right? First, outer, inner, last. The O and the I of, I of the FOIL would create a zero pair. They would eliminate each other and cancel out. We'd end up with 25 minus 9, see? Which is 14, see? So if we use this, we can factor. So 4a squared minus 25, we ask ourselves, what times what equals 4a squared? 2a times 2a. So we can write it as 2a inside parentheses with a little square up there. And what times what is 25? Well, 5. Now we can open it up to 2a plus 5, 2a minus 5. See? Isn't that easy? You could do this. I bet you can. Let's do a little bit harder one. Now we've got x to the 6th power minus 16y squared. We have to ask ourselves, what times what equals x to the 6th power? Now remember, the product rule of exponents says we add exponents. So if this were x3 and that were x3, we could add the 3 and the 3 exponents to get that 6, couldn't we? So that means we have x3 to the 2nd power, so it's squared. And what times what would be 16y squared? We could do 4y times 4y, couldn't we? And the 2y's together would give us that square. So we put 4y. So now we can open it up and factor it as x3 plus 4y and x3 minus 4y. That wasn't too hard, was it? Let's try a little bit harder one. Now we've got 36a squared minus 25b to the 6. What times what is 36a squared? Well, 6a times 6a. And what times what would be 25b to the 6? Knowing that we add these exponents, it would be a 5b to the third power, and we would square it, wouldn't we? Now we can factor it and open it up as 6a plus 5b to the third power, 6a minus 5b to the third power. See? Let's do one that's even a little harder. Look at this one. We have 9x to the eighth power, y to the fourth power, minus 49. What times what would be 9x to the eighth, y to the fourth, knowing that we would add the exponents when we multiply them? Well, the 9 would be a 3, wouldn't it? And what, time, what plus what would equal 8? That would be squared. It would be a 4, wouldn't it? We would just cut it in half. And this 4 could be cut in half to a 2, couldn't it? Because when we add them together, we'd get the 4. And what times what is 49? Well, 7. So now we've got 3x to the 4th, y to the 2nd, plus 7, and 3x to the 4th, y to the 2nd, minus 7. See? When we do this, the two center terms will create zero pairs when we find the product of a sum and a difference. See? It's kind of like a special polynomial, isn't it? If the terms of the binomial have a common factor, like a common variable. We factor out that common factor first. So 49a to the 4th minus 9a to the 6th, they both have an a, don't they? 
So we're going to factor out a to the fourth first. So that's going to leave him as an a to the second, isn't it? So now we're going to have 9a to the second, and we're going to have the 49 here. So the a to the fourth is going to come up front of the parentheses. We ask ourselves, a to the fourth times what would be 49a to the fourth? See? It would be 7 times 7, wouldn't it? And a to the fourth times what would be 9a to the sixth? It would be 3a squared, wouldn't it? That would give us this 9a to the sixth when we add the 4 and the 2, see? And we can write as the difference of two squares. We'd have a to the fourth, and we'd have 7 plus 3a, 7 minus 3a, see? We just factored out that a to the fourth first because they both had an a there, see? Let's try it again. Now we've got 18x squared y squared minus 50x to the sixth. Now, how do you square that 50? Oh, this is going to be tricky. We can do a 2 and split this 18 into 2 and split the 50 into 2, and then that'll give us a 25. And that 9 will give us a square, and the 25 would be a square, right? And then we'd have our two squares. So now we're going to factor out the 2x to the second as the first thing we're going to factor out. See? Whoops, I need a 2 here, don't I? I'm going to factor out 2x squared first. And we put him on the outside of the parentheses because 2x squared times 9y to the second power is going to give us the 18x squared y to the second power, isn't it? And 2x squared times 25x to the fourth, because we add the exponents, then we'll get that 6, won't we? We'll have 50x to the six. So now we can break these down. What times what would be 9y squared? It would be 3y times 3y, wouldn't it? And what times what would be 25x to the fourth? It would be 5x to the second times 5x to the second, wouldn't it? So now we've got the 2x squared on the outside of the parentheses, and then we've got our sum and difference, 3y plus 5x squared, 3y minus 5x squared. See, we write as the difference of two squares, all right? Now I want you to be careful. If you see x squared plus y squared, this can't be factored. If you tried to do it and you did FOIL method, we would end up with x squared and then xy and then because these are both addition it would all be plus and then we'd have yx but we write them in alphabetical order so it would be xy again wouldn't it and then we'd have y and y that would be y squared and when we combine these like terms we end up with x squared plus 2xy plus y squared well that's not x squared plus y squared that's completely different, isn't it? It gave us a trinomial. It's supposed to be x squared plus y squared. So this can't be factored, okay? See how it's got the plus sign in between there? We need the two center terms to create a zero pair for it to work to get back to a binomial, don't we? We need those two center ones to create a zero pair right there. So if it was x squared minus y squared, it would work, wouldn't it? So remember, the, the conditions that we need for this to work is, the first one is, it must have two terms that are both squares, and if they aren't, then we can factor out like a 2 or a 3 or a 4, whatever, to get it to that point, like we did here. See, now we can do 9 and 25, can't we? Or if it's already got them, we just do it, right? 49 is 7 times 7, that's 3 times 3. So the first condition is they have to have two terms that are both squares, and the second condition is the second term must have a different sign, all right? So if you look at this, this is a positive x squared, and that's a positive y squared. They don't have different signs, but these do. This, this would work because this is a positive x squared and a negative xy, and it would also work if that was a negative and that was a positive, as long as they have different signs, see? Now in the next video, we're going to be talking about factoring completely. That's going to be number 6.2d. And the video I made before this one, I actually got some construction paper and I did modeling of the difference of two squares. If you haven't seen it, there's a link in this video's description. You really should see it, then you'll really understand what's going on. And there'll be links to recognizing the difference of two squares and factoring monomials and factoring binomials. Okay? Let's see if I can step over my playing puppies here. So I'll see you in the next video about factoring completely, and I hope this was helpful. And 
If you liked it, hit the like button. I will appreciate it. Bye.